Hi everyone, this is Kai Wenner. And today I want to explain stateless versus stateful stream processing. Stream processing is still a very new concept for many people, even though it exists for many years already. Therefore, today I will show a few examples using Kafka streams and Apache Flink to explain the huge value of stream processing and how it is different from traditional databases or data lakes. While I will use mainly Kafka streams and Apache Flink, what I show you here is valid for every stream processing engine, no matter if it's open source or a cloud service, and no matter which specific stream processing technology you choose. To get started, this is really the fundamental point in the beginning. Stream processing is not like what you learned in the last 10, 20 years from database applications. In a database or data lake or data warehouse or lake house, the first thing you do is you store data at rest. And then at some point later, maybe just a few seconds, but later you request the data again for some compute. So like in this picture, you have an application or in development, this might be an IDE or a Jupyter notebook with some Python code. But in the end, what you typically do for writing logic is you query data from a database and then run some compute on that. And this works for many use cases like creating a report. But with stream processing, you need to completely rethink how you can use data. And the traditional database approach doesn't work if you need low latency, scalable workloads and build many innovative new applications. Something like a ride hailing app like Uber or Grab would not work with a database approach. Stream processing really is about continuously processing data in motion. So you do not always store it in a database or data lake first, no. Instead of you directly take action on the fly while the data is in motion, directly after it is created in a source. And that could be a sensor, a mobile app or any other kind of log file or something. There's plenty of stream processing technologies and cloud services on the market. They all have very different functionality and trade-offs. I would not cover this in this video here. I will use mainly Kafka streams and Flink because these are the leading frameworks and also the, 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 the most capabilities in here and both for analytical and transactional workloads and a lot of other benefits. But still, most of the concepts I show you are also valid for some of the other engines. But again, this is not the point here. It's really about the general understanding of how stream processing works and what you can do with that. For that, I want to show you a use case to be really practical instead of just showing some concepts. And therefore, the use case in this scenario is about fraud prevention and payments. And so the architecture, as you see on the left side, you start with a payment from a mobile app. It's sent to the data streaming platform. So this is typically something like a mobile app and then you do an HTTP call so that you send data into Kafka or something like that. And then you process the data, ETL at the top. And then on the right side, there's different things. On the one side, there are some analytical workloads. This is batch, like your business intelligence tools on a data warehouse in purple. But also with the streaming layer, then you can also apply business logic. And so what I will show you here today is three different examples where stream processing can be used and how it really can make a difference compared to API calls and batch processing. The first one is about data integration or ETL, or sometimes you might call it data engineering if you're more from the Python and data science space, but you process data for filtering, aggregations, and so on. The second example I will show you is about writing business logic. This really means you build an application like the fraud prevention application that runs the risk models and logic. And third, Instead of just writing business logic in Java or Python, you can even do AI within the stream processor. So the model inference, the model predictions. And these are the three examples I want to walk through. 
all around fraud prevention. To show you one concrete example with three different options about how to process data and what to do. But obviously the same can be applied to any kind of use case or industry like in industrial IoT and manufacturing, predictive maintenance and condition monitoring, or in retail about upselling and recommendations. So this is really industry independent. To set the context here first, we get our events on the right side from payments. And it really doesn't matter if this is coming from a gateway or a credit card, a mobile app, or even a combination of these data sources. You feed the data in as a business object into the streaming platform, which is typically either Kafka or at least a Kafka protocol. And then you use something like Confluent Cloud or any other service. You get the log events in in real time with HTTP, with MQTT, Kafka protocol, whatever. And now we want to process the data. And now I show you three options for stream processing. The first one is about stateless stream processing. This means we take a look at one event at a time. As you can see here right now, directly after the event is ingested, in this case we are at number 16, we process this event. In this case, it's a payment coming in and we write some business logic. The use case here I show, and of course this is all hello world, but I show you transaction monitoring. So this is super critical data and we monitor payment spikes. On the left side is a little bit of example code. In this case, we are using Kafka streams and with that we're using Java code. And we say, if the incoming payment is over 100 euro or dollar or whatever, then we do some action. So for example, we could send it to a more advanced risk model. And if it's below 100, we just process it or send it to a cheaper risk model. So this is a very simple ETL scenario, but very powerful because we directly use this logic after the event is created in motion before storing the data in a database or data lake. So we can directly take action. And this can be done for transactional and analytical use cases and in real time, even for millions of events. So this can really run at scale for hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. But important again, this is stateless. We take a look at one event at a time. An even more advanced opportunity is if you want to do stateful stream processing. This means you take a look at multiple events at a time. These events do not need to come from the same source. So they could come from different credit cards or you do one payment from your credit card to a gateway or point of sale system and another payment on your mobile app digital. All of that doesn't matter. It could also be a payment and another information from another system. It's different business objects stored in Kafka events with a data contract. And then you combine this data. So it's a state. You continuously monitor data, but take a look at several events at a time and apply logic to them together. In this case, we're defining a sliding window. Sliding means you continuously process the data and monitor that. In this case, we say the window tumbling is one hour. And so you can configure in different ways. So you can say, we always take a look at one hour and do some logic and then take the next hour, or we continuously follow for the last hour and really have a flow here. And now what's really important to understand, this is not like in a database where you always do an API call or a request and compute everything again every second or so. No, it's continuously running. And this is the fundamental difference of stream processing versus databases and data lakes. And this is why you can do so many use cases which are not possible with data at rest, especially if you need to act in low latency or if you need to execute transactional behavior by combining different data sets. And so this is an example for anomaly detection where we do continuous monitoring with state in mind. And this is another capability that stream processing provides with many different kind of window options you can choose from depending on your business needs. And in this case, we see an example with Apache Flink and SQL code. But this is really where you are flexible. So Kafka Streams is only Java. Flink is Java, Python and SQL. And you can do stateless and state full stream processing with both of them. You have the option. 
Last but not least, the third example is where we even embed AI and machine learning into the stream processor. The main use case is the same like before. So we still want to do anomaly detection, continuous monitoring of multiple payments. But in this case, we're not writing the business logic, but we embed a risk model that the data science team trained. Model training typically runs on a data lake outside of the streaming platform. So, and this is batch. You ingest all the data via Kafka into your favorite data lake, train a model to get insights, and then you deploy this model into the stream processor. Or you can also do remote model inference from the stream processor. But the point is, it's really running as part of your critical business process within the stream processing end-to-end -end application. And in this case, we're doing model inference based on a TensorFlow model that we embed into the stream processor in this example. And this is really how you can easily bring AI and machine learning into real world critical applications. No matter if it's for predictive AI, like in this example for fraud detection, or if you want to use generative AI, then you use a large language model. In that case, typically you don't embed it into the stream processor, but you do a remote call to do the inference because these models are too large to embed them into an application. But that's an architecture discussion, but the principle from being stateful or stateless for stream processing remains the same. So in summary, with stream processing engines like Kafka Streams or Apache Flink, you can do stateless and stateful stream processing. You can use it for ETL integration. You can use it for business logic and decisioning, and you can use it for applying AI and machine learning for doing predictions. Super powerful, valuable across all industries and use cases, and a fundamental difference and advantage compared to processing data at rest with a database, data lake, or lake house. I hope this was a, hope, a good conversation for you to learn something about stream processing. Feel free to reach out to me or add any comments if you want to do something. And you can also register to my newsletter to learn more about data streaming every one or two weeks. And feel free to reach out on LinkedIn to stay in touch. Thanks a lot for watching.